Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and today we are going to figure out what my favourite book of the last four years has been. Ominous Crows in the background is actually quite thrilling really. How are we going to do this is the first thing. Now, I saw Katie over at Books and Things go through all of her favourite books over the last few years on her computer and I thought that was a great idea and I wanted to steal it. And then I also have been watching a few of these videos where singers go through their backlist of songs and compare them against each other and I thought that that was a pretty neat idea as well. And so what we're going to do is we're going to be picking a book out of a cup and then that book is going to compete against another book from that year. At the end of that we're going to have four books, then we're going to knock that down to two books and then finally we will have a final book and then all of the years will compete against each other. It's going to take a while, it's going to be thrilling, it might be a complete mess, but we are going to do this. Now for this to work I did have to knock off two books from each year that just didn't make the cut and so from 2015 books that did not make this list are The Diviners by Libba Bray, Cress by Marissa Meyer, from 2016 The House of Silk by Anthony Horowitz and The Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Arter, from 2017 The Throwback Special by Chris Backelder and A Shepherd's Life by James Raybanks, from last year Fool's Fate by Robin Hobb and Dying in Other Words by Maggie Yee. Now these were all of my favourites, it doesn't stop them from being favourites, they are still on my shelves, but they just couldn't make the cut here. Let's get started on 2015. Now I'm aware with 2015 that this was the year that I stopped really reading young adult literature as my main focus and so I'm not sure that the favourite that we're going to pick today is going to be in this cup. Um, but we'll see. So the first book from 2015 is Public Library and Other Stories by Ali Smith. I don't have a copy of this book. I read it from the library and it still has one of the most thrilling short stories that I have ever read in my life in there and I really should get my hands on a copy of that one. Public Library and Other Stories is going to be competing against The Hours by Michael Cunningham. This is a difficult one. Um, the whole reason I did it like this is because when I did them in descending order it was really easy for me to pick which was my favourite. I think because because I own The Hours already. This, the Hours is one of my favourite films and so when I read the book I kind of knew that I was gonna enjoy it and I enjoy reading this alongside Mrs Dalloway. I have fond memories of this and the film and Public Library and other stories I can only really remember that one story but uh, I have a great, re like, I, the review I did of that I have fond memories of. Um, but we're five minutes in, we can't be questioning every book, so we're going to say the hours because I haven't yet bought Public Library and other stories. Um, and this is not a book that I've read again and again, but I've watched that film many times, so the hours won this one. Okay, next. Ooh, this... So we have... Sorta of Like a Rockstar by Matthew Quick, and this will be going up against Mrs Palfrey at the Claremont by Elizabeth Taylor. Okay, this is no contest for me. Mrs Palfrey wins this because um, whilst this book did bring a tear to my eye, four years later I don't really have much care for it. But Mrs Palfrey is humorous, has a story that I adore about this woman who keeps telling people that her grandson's gonna come and he never does so she basically hires an actor to take on that role and it's an incredibly brilliant story. Next we have Mrs Dalloway and she will be facing The Miniaturist by Jessie Burton. This is difficult because I really enjoyed The Miniaturist and I really enjoyed Mrs Dalloway when I read it. Um, I haven't bought any more of Virginia Woolf's books since reading this one and yeah I've read 
The Muse by Jesse Burton. I'm looking forward to her next book, but I haven't read The Restless Girls that she did last year. <sighs> Strangely enough, I think that today it's The Miniaturist. And I didn't expect that. I can't properly quantify it, but I think it's The Miniaturist. And I know that loads of other people would have different decisions about this. So yeah, um, if you're questioning my choices, please feel free to tell me in the comments. But yeah, The Miniaturist got this one. And that leaves only two books, which I remember reading at the same time. And they were the first two books to properly get discussed on this channel. And they are The Luminaries and The Goldfinch um, by Alan McCatton and Donna Tartt, respectively. I read these two humongous books at the start of this channel when I was really wanting to read beastly huge books and this they both took me over a month to read. I read them both during the time when I thought I was being made redundant. Um, I liked them both for different reasons. I really like Donna Tartt's portrayal of grief and there was something about Eleanor Catton's prose that I just found electric really. Um, that being said, um, I know that The Luminaries was really my favourite book of that year, so any book it came up against wasn't going to win this round, so I'm sorry to The Goldfinch, but The Luminaries got this one. I feel as though these books would do well. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how I feel, so we'll see. But let's get to 2016 next. So. The first book from 2016 is Freya by Anthony Quinn, and they will be facing off against Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. <laughs> okay, so here we have two completely different books, but strangely enough, it's another really quick one. Freya wins this one. Um, Anthony Quinn has great prose. I love Freya as a character. I think this book examines female friendships brilliantly. Um, and the Way of Kings is the Way of Kings, and um, I'm not the fondest of this series, despite our remembering all the twists and turns and battle sequences. Freya won. We have Night Film by Marisha Pessel, and they will be facing off against The Trouble with Goats and Sheep by Joanna Cannon. The Trouble with Goats and Sheep wins this one, again. Um, night film I read during the period of Father Bubble Sadness, I read this in a day, and it's dark, it's gritty, and I have fond memories of it. But The Trouble with Goats and Sheep is everything I like to see in literature, um, so it won this one. Next. Autumn by Ellie Smith will be facing Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson. Furiously Happy is a book that I read when I was feeling incredibly low and I reread this a few times and it always feels comforting but Autumn by Ellie Smith is just a fantastic read and <sighs> do I go on readability here or how I feel about the book? I think, despite the fact that I do adore this book, today, Furiously Happy wins. I feel just like the girls on All Stars, you know, they're having to pick who to send home. <sighs> but this is my choice of oh, like RuPaul in it. Can you imagine if I made all these books lip sync against each other? It'd be fascinating. But that just leaves two books, which are The Mad Ship, by Robin Hobb and Truth Witch by Susan Dennard. Considering these books have featured on a Who Did It Better previously, The Mad Ship wins. I didn't expect these two to end up against each other, but they did. So there we have our quarter finalists for 2016. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this one turns out. Now for whatever reason I put 2018's books on top of 2017's, so this'll be fun. Okay, the first book from 2017 to contend is The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry by Rachel Joyce, and they will be up against Three Things About Elsie by Joanna Cannon. Oh my lord, 
I got a proof copy of Three Things About Elsie that I still own. Then I went out and bought the finished edition. Joanna Cannon is one of my favourite writers at the moment, and I don't own... I, I only have the audiobook of The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry. I read these around the same time. Well, obviously I listened to The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry. Three Things About Elsie has older characters and discusses a few of my favourite things. It has um, Whitby in there, Battenberg. It was around the same time I was releasing Indisputably Doris, which also has a big thing about Battenberg in there. And the unlikely pilgrimage of Harold Fry is this heartwarming story that has darkness hidden beneath the humour, as does this one. They're very similar writers, they have a similar way of writing that I adore, but today I think the unlikely pilgrimage of Harold Fry wins. We have The Beginning of the World in the Middle of the Night by Jane Campbell, and this will be going up against Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurtry. I really like Jen Campbell's writing. This was a short story collection that I thought was particularly compelling and interesting. But, Larry, but Lonesome Dove has a lot of nostalgia for me and there's a chapter in here I reread because of the humour, another passage later on I kept rereading because it just seemed to grasp certain descriptions about humanity really well. And whilst I'm aware that it has a lot of terrible stuff related to women in here and it's very much a masculine book, I think it wins this one. Next we have Winter by Alice Smith going up against Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk. Ugh, these are really difficult decisions. Um, again, I really like Alice Smith's writing and I feel bad but it's got to be Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk. This reminded me of Christmas Carol. This was recommended by a booktuber, this was recommended by Russell over at Ink and Paper blog. I remember just thinking it was fantastic and I loved the character of Lily and the story it was telling as well. So yeah, Lily and Boxfish Takes a Walk wins this round. Which leaves us with two books that I didn't think would end up going up against each other. Um, this is another really difficult decision because I apparently read some really great books and that is Pachinko by Minya Lee against Homegoing by Yagi Asi. I don't know. Homegoing I read in a day, Pachinko I read in a day. Both of them are family sagas, both of them I absolutely adore and recommend to everyone. I don't have the words to properly quantify how difficult this is for me right now, but today, we're just thinking about today, because it could be the other book on a different day, today I think Pachinko wins it. So there are books for 2017, let's move on to 2018 and then, then we'll see. Our final cup. Let's mix them up a bit so we don't get some favourites against each other again. I mean, they're all favourites, but you know what I mean. Um, we have got A Nancy Boys by Neil Gaiman going against <laughs> The Management Style of the Supreme Beings by Tom Holt. I found both of these books hilarious. I've read Neil Gaiman before, one of my favourite writers. I haven't gone out of my way to read any more Tom Holt, but Tom Holt wins this round because I have fonder memories of this than I do about this. Yes, they're both discussing gods and humanity and all that fun stuff, um, but yeah, this one gets it. Next we have Museum of Innocence by Orhan Pamuk, going up against The Hoarder by Jess Kidd. I don't actually own The Hoarder by Jess Kidd, despite the fact that I have adored both of the books of hers that I have read. The um, Museum of Innocence was a gift, I tried to read it a few times, and despite the fact that I can't stand the narrator, 
There was something about his story that kept me reading. Yep, Museum of Innocence wins this round. This is strange because certain books that I expected to actually win today haven't won. Um, and yeah, I'm aware it's all subjective and it's all my own perspective here, so I'm making the choices, but still it's a bit weird for me. Um, next we have... Driven by Dane Cobain, going against... Don't Call Us Dead by Dennis Smith. It's as though the universe wants to give me some really difficult choices. On the one hand, I know Dane. Um, I've been watching his channel for over a year now, and this book brings the golden age of crime into the modern day. Don't Call Us Dead is a stunning poetry collection. <sighs> With my apologies to Dane, because I really... Yeah, with my apologies to Dane, Don't Call Us Dead wins this round. Which leaves us with The Music Shop by Rachel Joyce and And Other Days by Jawa Illy. Once again, these are all favourites, so it doesn't matter, but And After Many Days wins this round. I, I don't need to explain myself, go and watch my video about it if you want to. You can also go and see my thoughts on this. I think they're both fantastic books and this is, yeah. I don't need to explain myself every time. And these are our books from 2018. This has given us our finalists for my favourite book of the last four years. And in my next video, we will be going through a similar process and before eventually we finally figure out just what has made Charlie's favourite book since he joined Booktube. If you disagree with any of my decisions, then please feel free to tell me just what you would have picked instead in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, that is all.